Okay, so here's the model that we built earlier to represent this compound, right? Let me go ahead and zoom in one more time for you. Okay, so we see our two carbons in black, the chlorines in red, and our hydrogens in white, right? Okay, so if we look at this thing straight on, like you're seeing it right now, it's pretty difficult to see exactly how these chlorines are oriented with one another. So what we want to do is look at this thing from the side, okay? And what's cool about models is, is that we can just turn this model around so that it is like we're looking at this thing from the side, okay? So, hey, we want to look at this thing from the side, so all you have to do is just physically turn the model in your hand so that this front carbon is now facing towards you. And if you do this, you can see exactly how these chlorines are oriented with one another. This chlorine on the front carbon is pointing straight up, and this chlorine on the back carbon is pointing straight down. And this is exactly what Newman projections are trying to portray. Here's the front carbon, the dot, with the chlorine pointing up and a hydrogen going this way and this way. Here's the back carbon with the chlorine pointing down and a hydrogen pointing this way and this way. So if you want to see this one more time on the model, hey, let me zoom in for you. Okay, so here's the front carbon, here's the back carbon. Here's the front carbon with the chlorine pointing up. Here's the back carbon with the chlorine pointing down, okay? The whole point of these Newman projections, you guys, is just to be able to see how bonds are oriented with one another. Like how we saw that these two chlorines, their bonds are 180 degrees apart, right? And determining the number of degrees separating these bonds is important to determine which conformational isomer is the most stable. And we're going to see how this works in just a second. Okay, so so far we've only drawn one Newman projection to represent one conformational isomer of this compound. I told you that there are two main types of conformations that a straight chain compound can be in. It can either be staggered or it can be eclipsed. But hey, if it's staggered, it can also be either anti-staggered or ghost staggered, right? And you have no idea what this means just yet, but you will in a minute, okay? But cool. So far. Can anyone guess what conformation this Newman projection is in? With the largest substituents, these chlorines pointing in opposite directions and as far away from each other as possible? Okay, well let me just tell you the difference between staggered and eclipsed conformations real quick. A staggered conformation has no overlapping bonds. An eclipsed conformation has overlapping bonds. Okay, that's why they call it eclipsed, because it's overlapping. So tell me, you guys, do you see any bonds here that are overlapping, that are right on top of each other? No, right? This hydrogen is pointing this way, this hydrogen is pointing this way, this chlorine is pointing this way, this hydrogen is pointing this way, this hydrogen is pointing this way, and this chlorine is pointing this way, right? All these bonds are staggered. They're all pointing different directions. Okay, so we've established so far that this is staggered. But now the question is, is it going to be anti-staggered or gauche staggered? And let me tell you that a compound is considered anti-staggered when its two largest atoms are as far away from each other as possible. And hey, this is exactly what's going on here. The chlorines, the two largest substituents, are as far away from each other as possible. They're 180 degrees apart. So we would say that this compound is staggered, but more specifically, it's anti-staggered because the two largest substituents are 180 degrees apart. So let's go ahead and name this guy. This guy is anti-staggered. Okay, so you guys are probably going to be asked to draw three types of conformational isomers for any given compound. Anti-staggered, ghost staggered, and eclipsed. We've just drawn out the anti-staggered conformation. Now let's show you how to get to the ghost staggered conformation. And all you have to do to turn this anti-staggered conformation into a ghost staggered conformation is just rotate this back carbon 120 degrees. Okay, so let's do that right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw an arrow here. And above this arrow, write that we're going to rotate this back carbon 120 degrees. Okay, so rotate back carbon 120 degrees.
Okay, so all we're going to be doing to get from this anti-staggered conformation to the go-staggered conformation is take this back carbon and rotate it 120 degrees. So that this chlorine is going to be rotated 120 degrees up to this spot, this hydrogen is going to get rotated 120 degrees here, and this hydrogen is going to get rotated 120 degrees down to this spot. So let's go ahead and draw out what the resulting Newman projection would look like after we made these changes. Okay, so let's start out by drawing our circle with the dot in the center. All right, so for this next Newman projection, draw the front carbon identical to this one because all we're doing is rotating the back carbon. We're not touching the front carbon whatsoever, okay? Okay, so if we said that we're going to make this front carbon identical to this one, then we, we should see a chlorine on the bond that's going up and a hydrogen here and here, identical to this front carbon, right? But now, since we rotated the back carbon 120 degrees, let's see what kind of changes that's going to have on this Newman projection, okay? So let's fill in our back carbon now. And what did we say was happening from this conformation to this conformation? We're rotating the back carbon 120 degrees. And you can choose to rotate this thing clockwise or counterclockwise. I'm just going to choose to rotate this clockwise for our example, right? Okay, so if we rotate this back carbon 120 degrees clockwise, that means that the chlorine that used to be down here is going to rotate 120 degrees up to this position. This hydrogen is going to rotate 120 degrees to this position, and this hydrogen will rotate 120 degrees down to this position. Let's fill this in. Okay, so we're still going to have the three bonds extending from the back carbon, except now this chlorine is going to rotate up to this position, so he'll be right here. This hydrogen will rotate over to this position. Let's fill him in. And now this hydrogen will have rotated down to this position, right there. And hey, you guys, would we consider this to be in a staggered or eclipsed conformation? Well, do you see any overlapping bonds? No, right? This is a staggered conformational isomer. All these bonds are pointing different directions, right? So this is staggered, but is it going to be anti-staggered or go-staggered? Well, remember, anti-staggered is when you have the two largest substituents as far away from each other as possible, with their bonds 180 degrees apart, like we saw here. But we can see here that the two largest substituents, the chlorines, are now only 60 degrees apart. apart. The bonds are still staggered, but the chlorines are closer to each other than they were before. Okay, so, hey, this wouldn't be considered anti-staggered, but instead we would call it gauche staggered, all right? And cool, you guys have just mastered the second type of conformational isomer. Good job.